Hello wonderful person, this is Anton, and well, you know, back in the days, while everyone in high school wanted to participate in mock UN or a lot of other debates that basically involved political discussions, I personally always dreamed of participating in some sort of a imaginary scientific experiment where things just go extremely wrong, such as some sort of a hypothetical dramatic collision similar to a lot of science fiction movies that uh, involve an asteroid striking planet Earth. Although in this case, it's a little bit too massive and basically just destroyed the entire planet. Now, it just so happens that only a few weeks ago, some lucky scientists from NASA got to do just that. They participated in this hypothetical scenario where, basically, a potentially dangerous asteroid is discovered approaching planet Earth and has a slight chance of colliding with the planet. And the closer this asteroid gets to planet Earth, the more likely the chances for collision increase. And at some point, the scientists realize that the collision is imminent and it's going to cause a lot of damage. So they have to figure out where it's going to land and if there's anything else that can be done. And to do all of this, they gathered a bunch of experts from the US and from Europe and gave them about a week to work out the scenario and propose any solutions that would be viable using modern technology. In this particular case, they sort of condensed the six months into a week-long exercise. Well, let me show you the picture, which is basically the result of this experiment. It was this. The asteroid collided with the planet, destroying a really large part of Europe, and nothing could have been done to prevent it. That was the conclusion of this hypothetical scenario, and that's basically what the scientists sort of discovered. They discovered that we currently have no technology and no true ability to either divert or destroy this particular asteroid and it essentially crashes into the planet. Now that was not what they were looking for. They actually wanted to find a solution, but the solution was not found even by the experts. Well, let's analyze this in a little bit more detail. Although before I start, I really wanted to point out this interesting fact. Prior to the pandemic, Interestingly enough, in late 2019, several experts held a somewhat similar hypothetical scenario of essentially a pandemic simulation exercise, which was trying to simulate very similar conditions, but in this case with a virus. And as you can probably tell from the title, in this exercise, the results were also not very promising. Everything was a failure and there were a lot of different problems discovered, the entire planet was hypothetically infected, and it just so happens that the actual thing happened only a few months later. So these hypothetical exercises are extremely important, and especially when it comes to failing those exercises. But anyway, so what exactly did they find? Well, first of all, they were able to quite quickly determine all of the parameters of this asteroid. They referred to this hypothetical asteroid as 2021 PDC, and they also estimated that a potential collision would create an explosion of about 40 megatons, with the size of the asteroid being roughly around 100 meters or about 300 feet in diameter. And interestingly, original predictions suggested that the collision chance was only 5%, but as things got closer and closer to the planet, the predictions established that the collision was very, very likely. Which is essentially when the scientists decided to find out if there's any kind of a spacecraft or space mission that could somehow either deflect or destroy the asteroid. And the first problem, and actually the major problem, they discovered that six months was unfortunately just not enough time to plan any kind of an advanced mission that would allow the asteroid to be either budged or destroyed. And any kind of a rocket massive enough to carry an object to deflect this asteroid would require much longer preparation time and even then would not have enough mass to deflect the asteroid enough for it not to hit planet Earth. And the obvious first solution was of course to use some sort of a nuclear weapon, possibly either to completely disintegrate the rock or at least move it in a single direction away from planet Earth. And the nuclear explosion in this case would definitely reach the asteroid, but it would not produce the necessary effects to completely dislodge or completely destroy the asteroid. As a matter of fact, this other study that was released not so long ago thoroughly investigated these particular effects on a typical asteroid that would be anywhere from one to maybe a few hundred meters across. In this particular case, they did a lot of computer modeling using different nuclear reactions, and here we're talking about both uh, nuclear bombs and H-bombs, or both fusion and fission. And in this case, they also discovered that a fission bomb, which is an atomic bomb that would produce a lot of neutrons as opposed to a lot of energy and a lot of X-rays, would be a lot more efficient at moving an object and a lot more efficient at providing this necessary push. So, in other words, if we wanted to deflect an asteroid, we would probably want to launch an atomic bomb and not an H-bomb. 
Also, obviously, deflecting an asteroid is a lot more efficient and a lot more likely than destroying it. As a matter of fact, destroying it is extremely difficult. But one of the major challenges they discovered in this study is that depending on where you explode the bomb and even depending on the altitude of the explosion, different amount of energy was deposited on the surface of the asteroid and this resulted in a completely different force uh, pushing the asteroid. So essentially it's really important to time the explosion in order to create the most effective uh, push while also making sure that the actual yield of the bomb is just the right amount as well. You want it to be powerful enough to nudge the asteroid in the right direction, but you don't want it to be too powerful because this might end up destroying the asteroid, which of course just means that now you end up with a lot of pieces moving toward planet Earth and potentially spreading the destruction over a much wider area as opposed to being deflected and not colliding with the planet at all. So in short, the simulation here showed that trying to calculate and predict how a nuclear explosion will affect an asteroid is a very, very difficult task. And exploding it in a wrong way might end up creating something like this. You have tons of pieces crashing all over the place. So this is not exactly what we want either. We really want something that does not involve any explosion. And so this is exactly what this type of a simulation and this type of an exercise was for. But the only thing they were really good at was predicting where the asteroid is going to hit and determining the actual yield of the explosion. So within only a few days, they were able to work out the precise location where the asteroid is going to hit. And in this case, it was right here on the border of Germany, Austria and Czech Republic. And to precisely show the exact location where the impact would be the most severe. And so this exercise definitely showed us our weaknesses right now. One of the bigger weaknesses discovered is that there are still certain regions where it's very difficult for us to detect asteroids. For example, regions facing the Sun, or essentially if an asteroid comes from the inner solar system from the direction of Venus. Now, not a lot of asteroids come from this direction, but some do, and so it is still possible. And so one of the main recommendations here is potentially having new telescopes and new technology to make sure that we're looking at those regions where a hypothetical asteroid could maybe come from. We actually have one such example from 2019 when an asteroid known as 2019-OK -OK surprisingly came really, really close to planet Earth. This is the uh, asteroid approaching our planet. And it came out of nowhere, we didn't really know where it's coming from, and it was detected pretty much at the last moment. And because the asteroid was about 40 to maybe 100 meters in size, it was potentially a very dangerous asteroid. Luckily, it passed planet Earth at a distance of about 70,000 kilometers or about 45,000 miles. So in that sense, we were pretty safe. But because it came so close and nobody saw it coming, that is a big problem. What this shows us is that there's definitely a type of an asteroid that is still very difficult for us to detect that could potentially strike the planet without anyone ever noticing. Now, luckily for us, at least two telescopes are currently in the works to prevent this from happening and to essentially allow us to detect these asteroids better. One of them is the European Space Agency's Fly Eye Observatory, and the other one is known as the Testpad Asteroid Hunter, with both of them essentially being responsible for trying to detect more of these rocks from locations where we might not really expect them to come from. But at the moment, even if we discover such an asteroid coming, the options are still kind of limited. As both the exercise and the study I mentioned discover, our best option for now, or really the only option for now, is to use a low-yield atomic bomb. And in this case, an atomic bomb that would nudge the asteroid in just the right direction. But the problem with this is, of course, being able to direct it in just the right point and detonate it at just the right moment. Now remember, these objects move ridiculously fast. In this hypothetical scenario, the asteroid, and here we're talking about the one that crashed into Europe, was moving at the speed of about 15 kilometers per second. And the nuclear bomb approaching it would also be moving at possibly a few kilometers per second. And so here we would have to detonate a bomb with like a fraction of a second accuracy. That is something that's beyond our capabilities right now. And so even this still has quite a lot of challenges. And so the other recommendation, of course, was to have as some sort of a plan ready. We need to have either some sort of a rocket already set up or maybe come up with some other rapid response capability for planetary defense. Something that right now we really don't have. Now, one potential example that scientists used is maybe using lasers. Maybe we can use a laser to produce just the right effects on the surface of the asteroid to basically make it move by itself. 
There are definitely quite a lot of studies exploring this, with this one here that you can find in the description exploring this in more detail. And if not lasers, we could maybe also just smack something into the asteroid early on. And this is actually what NASA is planning to do with its DART mission. The mission that you see right here, whose main goal is going to be calculating the effects of a collision of a massive object with an asteroid in order to change its orbital parameters. I've actually talked about this a few years ago, and there's going to be more videos about this in the future, so we're not really going to discuss this in a lot of detail. This mission is starting really soon though, most likely next year, so there are going to be a lot of videos about this, and because of this you should probably subscribe. But we obviously have other solutions as well. One solution that someone proposed a long time ago is literally something like this. You take a massive spacecraft and you place it in an orbit around an asteroid. Now because of Newtonian physics, over time, if you place this in just the right location, the asteroid is actually going to start acquiring a little bit of velocity as well. Let me actually show you the speed graph for this asteroid as the probe orbits around it. It's not a lot of velocity, but it's large enough to affect the orbital parameters of the asteroid. And this means that if you were to place the massive object in its orbit early enough, you can definitely affect the orbit of this asteroid and deflect it this way as well. Alternative solution to this is basically spraying the surface of the asteroid, obviously using some sort of a probe as well, and thus affecting what happens on the surface of this asteroid, or literally making it either more reflective or creating more absorption so that the sun itself can do all of the work for us. If the asteroid starts absorbing more sunlight, it's going to acquire more push from the sun, and so the sun can actually do all of the pushing for us, which is of course a relatively cheap and relatively easy way of deflecting an asteroid, but this obviously also requires very complex calculations. Since we've never done any of these types of missions, for now all of this is very hypothetical. And unfortunately, as the NASA's exercise discovered, at least for now we don't really have any options or any opportunities to stop an asteroid. Which also of course means that we basically need to start preparing. Just like the pandemic exercise, this can also happen and can happen at any moment. We definitely need to be prepared. Which of course also means that we need to test all of our options to see which one is the best. But we'll definitely talk a lot more about this in some of the future videos. For now, the conclusion is that we're not ready, and hypothetically, the asteroid will definitely collide with planet Earth. And because of this, just like with the pandemic, we now have to have a better response system and be absolutely ready for when we discover an asteroid coming toward planet Earth. Now, for now, we don't really know of any asteroids on approach to planet Earth, and we know that none of them have any chance of colliding with the planet, but there are still a lot of these smaller asteroids that haven't been discovered. And because of this, we have to keep looking and also keep developing new strategies for trying to divert these asteroids from a collision with the planet. But anyway, once we discover more or once new missions come out and discover something incredible, I'll make sure to follow this up with another video. Until then, thank you for watching, subscribe if you still haven't, share this with someone who has learned about space and sciences, and maybe come back tomorrow to learn something else. Maybe support this channel on Patreon by joining the channel membership or by buying the wonderful person t-shirt you can find in the description. Either way, stay wonderful, I'll see you tomorrow, and as always, bye-bye.